Hi everyone, my name is Karen. This is my channel, Rather Be Reading, and today I'm bringing to you a reading vlog. Hi guys, it is 20 past 5 p.m. on Friday, the 9th of March. Welcome to a new vlog in which I am very excited because it's actually, I don't think I've mentioned this, it's actually a holiday weekend here in Adelaide this weekend. Um, it is Adelaide Cup Day on Monday, which means it's a public holiday here and I don't have work on Monday, so I have a three-day weekend, which oh, I'm just so, so excited about. So for a reading update, I've made pretty good progress in um, Gone with the Wind since we last spoke. So Last night I got some good reading done and I actually managed to get to page like 668 I think it was. And then I got really good reading in this um, done today and I'm now on page 818 so I'm that far of the way through. So I have less than 200 pages left which is really exciting. I should definitely be able to get this finished like over this weekend obviously easily I'll get still I'm not sure how much of this I'll get read tonight my sister is coming around tonight for Buffy and Angel time which is always exciting um, but hopefully I can get a little bit more of it read and then if I could get this finished tomorrow uh, that would just be awesome because I think that would mean that I'd got this read in just under a week which for a thousand page book I'm very happy with I'm like a dense thousand page book. If this had been like Jenny Hunt's To All the Boys I've Loved Before and it was a thousand pages I could have read it in like three or four days probably because it was so easy to read but this is a dense thousand pages. So I'm really excited to be almost done with that. Um, I didn't have any audio books or anything come in. I do still have seven on hold so hopefully a few more come in over the weekend so that I've got some things lined up to listen to when I go back to work next week. Um... But I think that's it. Uh, I will probably check in with you guys at some point during the day. Tomorrow, I don't have too many plans over the um, holiday weekend, which is I'm excited about, frankly. I don't think there's any soccer or anything going on because it's a holiday weekend. Um, I'll definitely still be going for coffee tomorrow. And I would like to try to get like as many of the like errands and things done as I can um, tomorrow so that I can enjoy my like Sunday and Monday without having to like worry about that there's things that I need to get done. So I might have a busier day tomorrow, but apart from that, it's just going to be a pretty cruisy weekend. I think I am going to a friend show on that's late on Saturday night um, with Chikara and Mitchell and Mitchell's my brother. Have I ever said my brother's name on this channel? I don't know. Mitchell's my brother and Chikara, his girlfriend, um, are going to a show with them on Saturday night and one of their friends and then I, I don't know we might be doing something Sunday night because we quite often like have a barbecue and play cards and stuff on a holiday weekend but I'm not sure so yeah I don't know what's happening but I'll definitely check in with you guys at some point tomorrow probably and let you know what's happening bye guys hi guys it is about 11 a.m. I think yeah 11.04 on Saturday the 10th of March I am in the library car park, as is my standard. So basically today I've just had to run a lot of errands. Um, I was at coffee this morning, as usual, with my parents and my nan. And then I went to um, the recycling place to trade in my cans and bottles. So in the state that I live in, you can collect up your recyclable cans and bottles and things, and then you can take them to like a recycling place and you get 10 cents per like can or bottles so every couple of months. Like over, I generally collect them all up in an area in my house and then every couple of months I, well like a couple of times a year I go and trade them in so I did that um, I then came to the library I had three holds to pick up and if you couldn't tell why I have problems on my channel with library due dates this is why because almost every single week I have at least one hold come in at the library so I did that so I, that's where I am now I still have to go and put petrol in my car and I'm going to take my car through the car wash because my car is absolutely filthy. Um, and then I need to um, go home. I have a couple of videos that I want to film this afternoon. I also have to edit the vlog from the vlog previous to this one and get that uploaded. I've edited like half of the clip so hopefully that shouldn't take too long but I do also like I said have to film two videos. So that's kind of my day today and I am out tonight as I've mentioned going to a show. 
Um, but I am still hoping. So I did get a bit more reading gone with the wind last night. I read two or three chapters last night. So I think I'm at like page 840 or so. I think I had about 130, 140-ish pages left to go. So I'm still hopeful that I'll be able to finish that this afternoon as well because that would be really, really awesome because I would actually really love to take a bit of time out tomorrow afternoon and watch the movie, which is a bit of time out because the movie is like almost five hours long, almost four hours long. I think it's like three hours and 58 minutes or something. So it's basically a four hour movie. So yeah, but that is about it for my updates. I am going to go now so that I can turn my car on so I can turn the air conditioning on because it is real, real hot. And I will talk to you guys maybe later this afternoon if I finish Gone With The Wind. If not, probably tomorrow. But I'll definitely talk to you guys again soon. Hi guys, it is 6.40pm on Saturday, 10th of March still. I thought I'd give you guys a quick update because I don't look like trash right now. So, you know, that's always nice. So I have read a little bit more of Gone With The Wind. I'm on page 919. So I've got like 65 pages, something like that, left to go in there. So I should definitely be able to get this finished tomorrow, um, obviously. I'm not going to get it finished tonight. I'm about to head out now to meet um, Mitchell and Shakara um, and then we're going for dinner and to a show and the show's really late. The show doesn't start till 11.45 I think it is. It's like a late night show so it won't finish till like 1.32 when I won't be home until well like till after that because it's like 40 minutes, half an hour um, into the city from here. So yeah, it's going to be a late night. So but yeah, I just thought I'd give you guys a quick update while I look semi-presentable. I don't normally, like, wouldn't normally put on, like, a full face of makeup or something like this, because I really rarely wear makeup, but I've been having a lot of problems with my skin lately, so, you know, it was almost just kind of a confidence thing. But anyway, I will definitely talk to you guys at some point tomorrow and let you know when I finish. I'll probably, like, in the morning finish Gone With The Wind, and then I'll check in with you guys and let you know kind of my final opinions and thoughts on the book, but I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Hi guys, it is 4.30 p.m. on Sunday, the 11th of March. I thought I'd give you guys a very quick update because I don't have much to report. Apologies, my skin is looking really rough right now. Um, I got home real late last night, which I knew was going to happen. So the show that we went to didn't start till 11.35, I think it was. Um, and I think it got going a little bit late um, and then... Needless to say, I didn't get home till about 3 in the morning, um, which meant I slept a lot later than I had originally planned. I didn't, like, get up until about 1 p.m., which I haven't slept that late in so long. Um, but, you know, sometimes these things happen, and I'm not too worried about it, to be honest, because I do have a, another whole day of a weekend tomorrow. Woohoo! So then I really did nothing for... The rest of the afternoon, I was just really lazing about in bed, watching a bit of YouTube and just doing nothing really. And I am just now about to head to my parents' place. We are having a barbecue and cards night tonight, which I'm really excited about because I love playing cards and eating barbecue. So uh, I'm going to that now. In terms of a reading update, I only have read two pages, two pages, two chapters in Gone with the Wind. So I'm on page... 937 so I've literally got that much to go I've got less than 50 pages to go so I'm definitely going to get this finished tonight I originally wanted to watch Gone with the Wind today but when I woke up at one and I knew I'd be leaving about this time to go to my parents and the movie's four hours long I knew I probably wasn't gonna have time to watch the whole thing so I'm gonna do that tomorrow and I haven't finished the book yet anyway so that is a tomorrow plan now um and I'll definitely like I think so I'll go to my parents and then I'll probably get home like late-ish and then I'll probably just read the rest of this and then go to sleep and then tomorrow we'll be gone with the wind movie watch um but that's about it I don't think I have anything else to report I'll probably check in with you guys tomorrow when I and give you my thoughts when I wake up in the morning about the book and then I may check in with you again tomorrow afternoon after I've watched the movie and just give any thoughts that I may have if I've got any follow-up thoughts after watching 
the movie. So, yeah, that's it. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Hi guys, it is about 12pm on Monday the 12th of March, um, so I thought I'd give you guys a bit of an update, I look pretty rough, but you know, it's a lazy day at home, this is how we look. So, last night I did finish Gone With The Wind, finally, I finished it before I went to sleep last night, and I'm so happy um, to be done with it. Um, so... I enjoyed it. I really did. For such a long book, I think it would have been really easy to kind of get really tedious and like really bogged down in it. But for the most part, it was quite readable and I did really enjoy it. It probably helps that I've seen the movie um, and I knew, you know, generally like where the story was going and things like that. Um, I will say there is definite trigger warnings in it for racism. So in case you don't know, this is a story that is set kind of just before and then into the civil American Civil War and then following on from the Civil War, like after the Civil War ended as well. So obviously it deals a lot with issues of like slavery and racism, but partly and the just like FYI, the N word is used a lot, um, mostly by other um, African American people use it a lot to describe it. Because one of the things that I found really like interesting, which I kind of knew, but is still like interesting to see it like kind of in context, is that within African American people themselves, there was somewhat of a class system. Slaves who were in the house, like that were household slaves, they were considered to be so far above like slaves that were used for like just for like general kind of menial labor, like on farms. Like if you were just a farmhand, you were considered well below um, slaves who were used like in the actual home. So within that, there was his own kind of um, class system. And I found it really interesting that you never really see the side of the Civil War, or I've never really seen the side that even though you had the North who were fighting against slavery, they really had very low opinions of African-American people and they weren't really in a lot of ways fighting against it for like what I would consider to be the right reason. So that was really interesting. There is also some stuff in there about um, the KKK and people who were in the early KKK and I actually found it really interesting that some of the reasons why people were in the KKK is not like what you would think in the early days of the KKK. Obviously, that in no way makes it okay or that that organization in any way is because it's obviously disgusting. But it's really interesting to kind of see this early like parts of things like that. Um, obviously, really enjoy the characters. The characters are not likable. There's like basically the only character who I really enjoy is Melly. Melly is like a really nice character. Um, but Scarlet is a very interesting, all the characters are so interestingly complex. And I love how you get to kind of go on this journey with characters and you see these characters who are maybe considered to be really weak. And as the story goes on, you see how strong they actually are. And the opposite as well, that you have these characters who are seen to be maybe much like stronger characters, but as the story goes on and they have a really trying and hard times in their lives, you become to see that maybe they're not as strong a people as what you think they are. So all of that I just find really fascinating. So I did really enjoy it. It's long, obviously, but I did really enjoy it. I can't give this five stars at all because of like some parts of it were hard to read with the language and not only just with the language, like I say there was racial slurs used in it a lot, but also because when the people who are slaves are speaking, it's told in like, um, oh, what's the right term? Like the way it's pronounced, it's written the way the words would have been pronounced. Um, the only thing I can kind of liken it to, but not to the same extreme is, you know how Hagrid's dialogue in Harry Potter is like written, like how he would say it. It's the same for the African-American slaves in the book. And some of that was hard to read. I had to like reread passages. Cause like, wait, what are you saying? Um, and it's hard to read because of the subject matter. Like it was hard to read about slavery and, you know, all of those things. Oh, another thing I wanted to mention, it's also interesting that once slavery was like technically abolished, 
there were a lot of slaves who were loved by the families that they worked for and who did want to stay with those families and who did stay. So I'm not saying that it's in any way an okay thing because obviously it's not, but it's just so interesting to see the different sides and the different nuances that come with these like huge issues, especially huge issues that we know from within history. So like I said, I can't give it five stars because of just like some of the difficult stuff in there. Um, but I did really enjoy it and I am going to give it a four star because I mean, it's a, a, like a modern classic. It really is. So it is like 12 PM. Like I said, I'm about to make myself some lunch. I've been up for like it, an hour and a half, two hours, but I've just been lazy about doing absolutely nothing because apparently that's how I enjoy spending my time. But I'm just about to sit down now once I have lunch and watch my Blu-ray of Gone with the Wind. I'm really excited because I haven't seen this in quite a while. Um, and already in my mind, I obviously could picture the movie characters when I was reading the book and the casting in this movie is just so spot on. And I don't know if that's because I've seen the movie first, but the actors that were cast in this really are exactly what I would envision for the characters. So I'm excited to watch that. Um, I may check in with you guys after I've seen the movie to give you guys an update for any thoughts there. If I have any original thoughts to talk about once I've seen the movie, um, maybe, maybe not. Um, the next book that I'm going to be picking up is The Lost Girls of Camp Forevermore by Kim Fu. That's one that I have from NetGalley, and I have to read that. Normally, I read my NetGalley books in order of the publication, but I have to read that one next because it's one of those weird ones, and I don't know if it actually says it when you get the book, but I sometimes don't notice it if it does say it, and I will download a book, and it's one that you can't put onto your Kindle, and it's one that you can only get in like an Adobe digital like edition type of thing, and they also have an expiry on them. So you can download them, then you only get like 40 days or something to read it, and if you don't read it in that time, then it just it, you can't read it anymore. So I want to, um, but it's still it's like obviously listed on your net galley as something you haven't reviewed, so it affects your feedback ratio. So I want to read that one next to get that out of the way before that expires. Um, and I probably will be reading that a little bit of that this afternoon, but not too much, but I may check in with you guys later. I may not. It may be tomorrow when I'm back at work, but I'll definitely talk to you guys at some point again soon. Hi guys. It is now 6.30 PM still on Monday, 12th of March. I thought I'd give you guys a really quick update. So I did watch the Gone with the Wind movie. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, it's, I mean, I already own, like I own the Blu-ray, so obviously it's a movie that I enjoy. I mean, it was really fun to watch after having just read the book. It really does stick so true to the book. There's only really one factor um, that's prominent in the book that's not in the movie. Um, or two, I guess, kind of. Which, um, but yeah, so it sticks really close. It's like a four-hour movie, but because it's a four-hour movie, that shows to me how good of a movie it is because I'm never bored in the movie or thinking I'll just get on with it which is similar to the book it's a thousand page book but at no point was I kind of wishing that I was done with it so overall it was a good time and I then since I've done that I've edited and uploaded a video to go up tomorrow I then have had a shower and washed my hair so that I don't have to do it tomorrow and I've just put a store-bought lasagna into the oven to heat for dinner, which I'm really excited about because it looks really good. Um, and that's it. I don't have anything else to report. I'm not doing anything tonight. Um, normally I would have knitting tonight, but because it's the public holiday, some of the girls are still going, but I just completely forgot about it until there was a message this afternoon. So I just decided I'm not going to go this week. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to have some dinner. I'm going to do some reading. I have read a little bit of um, The Lost Girls of Camp Forevermore by Kim Fu, but I've only read like probably like 10 or 15% of that, but I'll be reading a bit more of that and just watching some booktube tonight and just really like chilling out. But yeah, that's all I've got. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow when I get home from work and yeah, talk to you guys tomorrow. Hi guys, it is 6 p.m. exactly on Tuesday the 13th of March. <sighs> I am home a little bit later than I normally would be. So fun story. I got on the wrong bus today. I don't know what I was doing. I saw, it's even more annoying because I ran to get on that bus because I thought it was my bus and it wasn't my bus. I saw, so my bus number that I get on ends in a 2X and I saw the 2X obviously and thought it was my bus and got on but it was a different bus that ends in 2X and 
that bus goes on largely the same like um, route as mine does until it gets past like a big interchange and then it turned off down a different road and I was like wait where are we going and I looked around at the other passengers and realized that no one else was concerned that we weren't taking the route that I am normally used to the route that I'm normally used to so um I got off <laughs> the bus and then I had to call my mom and my mom had to come pick me up from because I was like not in walking distance like to my house like I was like way, way far like it would have taken me like probably an hour to walk from where I had to get off so yeah that was a good fun story for the day so I'm home like half an hour to 40 minutes later than I probably would have been if that didn't happen um but anyway so now um to give a reading update I completely forgot what I was here for for a second so today I finished The Lost Girls of Camp Forevermore by Kim Fu. So it's not too long of a book, so it was quite easy to get through. I think it's only like 290 pages. So this is a book that I had from Neck Alley. And it says, so it's about five girls aged between 9 and 11 who go to this like summer camp. And as part of the summer camp, there's like an overnight trip where they go with one of the counsellors and they like kayak for like half a day and then they camp out overnight and they come back the next day type of thing. Well, a certain event takes place and they end up in like kind of in a life or death situation and they're stranded kind of out in the wilderness and they have to, these like five young girls have to kind of fend for themselves. So you've got that part of the story, but then kind of inter interspersed with that, you have the lives of so you'll get like one section that's about what was happening to them on this camp and then the next chapter will be focusing on one of the five girls lives basically after they've left camp like different areas of their life depending on like which one it is and you'll get this whole section basically about their life for, for like years and like what's happened to them and then you'll go back and you'll get a bit more of the camp story and then you'll get another character and their life story and so on and so forth. Uh, I didn't like it. I really didn't like it. I don't understand what the purpose of the stories about the five girls' lives as adults was. They were in no way connected to the survival story. I could have understood if it was showing – I originally thought that it was going to be showing the impact of, like, this trip had had on their lives – and maybe that's what the author was trying to do, but it was just not connected. Like the events that were happening to them just weren't connected whatsoever to the survival part of the story. And in, in one girl's case, you're not even following her as an adult. You're following her sister, which I was like, like, what even is the point of this? It was just ridiculous. Um, and it really took away from the survival aspects of the story because you knew as you got each girl's perspective, you knew that she was going to survive the survival part because you knew that she was alive as an adult. It was just really pointless. And those parts of the story were really boring. The only parts of the story that I liked were the survival parts, which were few and far between, because those parts did have some very, like, like real survival aspects to it. You've got these young girls and the things that they, like, do to – they're not lost for, like – a super long time but the things and the way that they act towards each other and like the way they act within themselves like because of what's happening to them was like all oh, that's really interesting but that was such a small part of the story um and I actually read Kath from Kath Elizabeth if you're watching this hi Kath um I read her review afterwards and I completely agree with what she said that if this had been a novella that was just about the survival impact like the survival, sorry, part of the story, it would have been really interesting and really great. But it wasn't. It had all this other crap in there that just, I don't know what, it was like she wrote the two, like she originally had written this novella about the survival thing and then had written this story, like a sequel almost, about what the girls were getting up to later and then tried to like mesh the two stories in together and like weave them in and it didn't work it just really really didn't work um and I didn't really like it um so I end up giving that two stars I then did start listening to an audiobook today so this isn't an audiobook that I had planned to listen to none of my numerous holds had come in 
Um, so I had seven books on hold, seven audiobooks on hold, and I now have a further two through searching to try to find something to listen to. So I ended up going to the um, available now section of my Overdrive app for audiobooks, and then I sorted it by most popular, and I decided to get out what was considered the most popular um, book on there of the available now section. So I'm listening to Secrets of the Tulip Sisters by Susan Mallory. This is a women's fiction story about basically two sisters who are not involved in each other's lives at all. So they're 28 and 25, I believe, but about 10 years ago, the younger one was sent away to boarding school and then she basically never ended up coming back and they just like really don't know each other um, as adults. And um, the one who was sent away ends up returning to the small town and it's just kind of about... I guess like kind of what's going on with their lives and I guess them kind of trying to like reconnect and like the stuff that's kind of kept them apart because their parents are divorced and all that type of thing. So I actually am enjoying it more than I thought that I would. I thought it was like lighthearted women's fiction isn't always my favorite genre, but I am enjoying it. And I'm about 36% of the way through that. I only listened to it about the second half of the day. I had some podcasts to catch up on this morning, which I did, and then I started listening to this. So I'm 36% of the way through that. I then did also start um, – so because I finished The Lost Girls of Camp Forevermore, the next book that I need to move on to is um, Still Me by Jojo Moyes. This actually wasn't planned to be on my TBR, but Stupid Me didn't take into consideration that because this is a recent release, it's got a lot of holds on it at the library, and because of that, I can't renew it. Um, so I need to read this this week so that I can take it back when I go to the library on Saturday. So I want to get this done this week um, so that I can take this back. And even though it looks like it's quite big, I think this is a large print. Like the text looks, yeah, it's a large print edition. So I don't think that it should take me as long as what it looks like it will. Um, but I finished The Lost Girls of Camp Forevermore and I didn't have anything to read um, on the way home from work. And so the library book that I'd next plan to pick up is Sweetly by Jackson Pierce. Um, and I have a lot of library due dates and stuff kind of breathing down my neck at the moment. So I managed to get a copy of this on ebook. And so, and I couldn't get a copy of Still Me on ebook. So I've got the ebook and I'm going to slowly be reading this just in the situ in the like times where I can't pick up a physical book, like when I'm at work and I can occasionally like squeeze a chapter of reading in, but I can only really do that on my phone. Then I'll read like a chapter of this and like slowly so that I'm not wasting reading time where I could be getting through more library books. So I didn't put a bookmark in this. So let me just figure out where I'm up to. I did read a little bit of this. So not very much at all. I'm on page 22 of this, but this isn't too long. Um, this is only about 300 pages. And again, the text is, I don't know if you can see that, the text is pretty large and it's like pretty spacey. So um, I don't think that that will take me even only getting through a little bit. I think that I could probably get through this pretty fast, but my main focus is going to be Still Me by Jojo Moyes. Okay, that was a really complicated update and I feel like I went on and on about nothing. So that's it for the update. I have nothing going on tonight. So plenty of reading and booktube watching. I don't have to do any. I'm really happy because last night I managed to not only edit and upload the video that I was talking about, but I edited and uploaded the next video that I would have needed to do. So I don't need to edit or upload anything for the whole week now. I've got everything done for the week. And now until I film next weekend, I'm all set. So that's really great. So yeah. That is it for this clip. I think I'll check in with you guys when I get home from work tomorrow. Hopefully I can make some really good progress on this tonight. And yeah, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Hello. Apologies for the crappy lighting. It is 10 to 10 p.m. on Wednesday, the 14th of March. I've just got home from soccer training. Um, I got home from work and I had only a tiny bit to go on the audiobook that I was listening to. And so I just was finishing that off. And then I ended up having to leave early for soccer training. And so I ended up basically, I literally finished the audiobook as I was opening the front door to leave. So I left straight to soccer training. And then I've just got home from soccer training. Um, soccer training ran, ran really long tonight. So I've literally only got home about 15 minutes ago. So I want to give you guys a really quick update though, because I have made quite a bit of reading progress since I last spoke to you. So as I alluded to, I finished the audiobook today for The Secrets of the Tulip Sisters by Susan Mallory. 
So this is a, I mentioned the synopsis yesterday, so this is like a women's fiction um, story and it is quite heavy, just in case you're not into this, it is quite heavy on like the steaminess factor. But one of the things I really liked about it was that I thought it was very positive about female sexuality and about female sexual pleasure. There's a lot of commentary in there on that and I thought that was really good. Um, so I enjoyed that aspect of it. Being, it does have a very like everything tied up into a nice neat little bow type of ending, which aren't my favorite if I'm being honest, but are pretty typical of women's fiction type genre. And it doesn't bother me as much with that genre. I hate when they try to do that with thrillers because it feels inauthentic to the type of book that you're reading. It doesn't bother me as much with um, women's fiction. So overall, I thought it was um, pretty enjoyable. I would read something else by this author if I ever came across it. Um, it was enjoyable for sure. Um, and in the end, I was going to give that a 3.5 stars. I then did read a few chapters here and there throughout the day of the ebook that I have of Sweetly by Jackson Pierce, which I don't have the copy in front of me. It's in the bedroom. Um, and I'm on page about, I think I'm on about page 110 or so of that. So, or somewhere around the 100 page mark. So I'm about a third of the way through that, which is pretty good. Um, and then I have also been reading Still Me by Jojo Moyes. And I managed to get over halfway through this, so last night I read about 150 pages, I think, and I've read about another 120 today. So I'm on page 274. Oh, God, I almost hit myself in the face. 274, and this is less than 500 pages, so I am over the halfway mark. I've got this smaller section here um, to read. Um, so I'm actually really enjoying this. I really do enjoy Jojo Moyer's as writing. And the main, there was one main part of the plot of the second book, which I'm not going to talk about because it would be a spoiler for the first book, that I really, really didn't like. And I, st I still enjoyed that book. I think I gave that book a 3.5 thereabouts rating. So I did enjoy that book. Um, and this book doesn't have that aspect. And so I was really just happy to be back immersed in Lou's world because I really enjoy her as a character and I do really enjoy Jojo Moyers' writing. So I'm really, really enjoying this and looking forward to kind of finding out where it's kind of headed um, because I am over the halfway mark now. So I'm still, I'm like, it's only Wednesday. So I still have two days because I want to finish this by Friday. Um, but that's definitely doable. I do have a massage tomorrow night, which will take up a chunk of my evening. But if I get another decent chunk of this red, like on my commute and lunch break and such tomorrow, then I'm pretty like hopeful that I'll be able to get this read within the time limit that I've kind of sent for myself. I just need want to finish it in time to um, return this to the library on Saturday. So that's no problem at all. And I have another book that I need to start on Friday, but yeah, that's it. I think for this update, apologies again, appearance, lighting, all of that jazz. I will, talk to you guys. I'll give you guys an update probably before I go to my massage tomorrow. So I'll talk to you guys then. Hi guys. It is about 10 to 6 PM on Thursday, the 15th of March. Oh, I've had a kind of a crappy day. I just had a kind of a tough day at work and then I ended up having leaving work about 10 minutes late. And because I left 10 minutes late, then I missed my bus and I had to the next bus. So I've only got, just got home just recently. Um, but for a reading update, I did listen to a new audiobook today, and I listened to the entire audiobook for The Stranger Beside Me by Anne Rule. So this is the one that I've mentioned a few times on my channel. This is the true, like, nonfiction true crime story about Ted Bundy. And the interesting thing kind of in this one is that Anne Rule was actually friends with Ted Bundy. They worked together as volunteers on like, I think it was like kind of like some kind of crisis hotline and they worked together like two nights a week for like a year or two years and like went to Christmas parties together and things like they were friends. Um, and she was actually a believer in his innocence until further details came out. And I think it was confirmed that he, well, he was convicted of killing, being a serial killer and killing lots of women really horrifically. Um, the book was really interesting. I realized that I didn't actually know that much about Ted Bundy. I know that 
the movie Silence of the Lambs, that there's some things in that that were based on Ted Bundy, a few details of that. But that's basically the things that were similar to that movie are the only things really about him that I knew. Um, I didn't actually know that much about him. Um, so I found it really interesting. But I will say that the audiobook of this was only like four hours long or something like that. It was very short. So to me, the book felt really surface level. It really didn't go into anywhere near as much detail kind of as what I thought it was going to. Um, but it was still like interesting um, and enjoyable, but it just didn't kind of go like as in-depth as I probably would have liked it to. Um, so I'm probably going to give that a 3.25 star rating because I was quite a little bit disappointed in it. Um, I then did also start listening to, so I had another audiobook that had come in, which was great. So I've started listening to, um, what is that book called? Sorry, give me a sec, let me pull it up. It's called This Is How It Always Is by Laurie Frankel. And I am, how far away through that am I? I am 21% of the way through that. Um, so hopefully I can get that finished tomorrow. Um, so this is a literary fiction, I guess. And it is about a family that have, there's the mother and the father, and then they have five sons. And their youngest son, Claude, at the point of the story that I'm in, at now, he's five or six, I believe. He's in kindergarten, but he is um, suffering with gender dysphoria. So he is a has been born a boy, but he feels on the inside that he is a girl, and he likes to dress as a girl. Um, and at the moment, it's about the family. Like I say, he's only in kindergarten at this point. Um, so it's about the family kind of, you know, not dealing with it, but like as it's coming up. So basically about how the like little things that are happening that are kind of leading them to discover this gender dysphoria. Um, so, and it's really been really interesting so far. I'm actually really enjoying it. So hopefully, like I said, I can get that finished tomorrow. I then have read a bit more of, let me grab... Of Sweetly, I managed to get some chapters of this read um, while I was at work today. So I'm now on page 197 of this. So I'm about two-thirds of the way through this now. Um, so again, I'll probably get this finished tomorrow. Um, and then, well, depending how much reading I can get done at work tomorrow, I think I'm going to be really busy tomorrow. So actually, maybe I won't get any further in that um, at all until next week. I'm not sure. I have read some more of Still Me by Jojo Moyes as well. So I read a little bit more of this um, last night before I went to bed. And then I've got some reading done today. I had a seminar that I had to go to on my lunch break today. So I only got like bus reading done. So I'm on page 385. So I'm like that far of the way through. So I've got about 80 pages to go. So I'm hoping I can get this finished tonight. Um, and I am I'm enjoying it. I really am. I'm really enjoying it. Like I said yesterday, being it's just so easy to slide back into Lou's world. And I really just enjoy her as a character, and I'm just enjoying this a lot. Um, so I'm hoping to get that finished tonight. Um, I will also, sorry, I should say, I'm actually enjoying this as well. I'm enjoying this a lot more than book one. This was a book that I was really skeptical about giving a chance because I didn't love book one but I wanted to give this a go because I this is a technically a Hansel and Gretel retelling and I've never read anything that's a Hansel and Gretel retelling so I wanted to give the second book a go and I'm glad that I have so far because so far I'm really enjoying it um but yeah I think that's kind of it for the reading update that's where I'm up at as I mentioned yesterday I have a massage tonight I need to leave actually in about 15 20 minutes um to go to that so I'm not sure how much reading I'll get done tonight but hopefully I can finish still me um, I then also tomorrow I'm not sure when I'll be able to update you guys tomorrow I have a uh, work function tomorrow at the fringe it's the last weekend of the fringe and I actually have managed to receive a voucher so my boss um, he had bought a voucher for someone in his family and it turns out they can't use it so he offered it to me um, which is really, really lovely. So I'm hoping that I'm going to be going to the Fringe a bit this weekend to use that voucher. Um, but I'm not sure kind of what the details of that are. But I do have a work function 
on straight after work that's like a two hour drinks and food package um so that should be fun so i've got that on so i'm not sure what time i'll be home tomorrow to update you guys so just a warning that'll probably be shitty lighting tomorrow um but yeah i think that's it for now like i said i'll talk to you at some point tomorrow not sure when but i'll definitely talk to you guys again soon hi guys apologies once again for the shitty lighting but it is 11 p.m on friday the 16th of march this is actually going to be the last clip for this particular vlog so i did want to film this tonight so as I mentioned yesterday, I had a function on after work today. So I've literally just got home a couple of minutes ago and wanted to film this um, update for you guys because I have made some progress since I last spoke to you guys. So last night, um, I ended up finishing Still Me by Jojo Moyes. And I really, like, I enjoyed it. I really did. I thought it was a big step up from... Um, the second book, because as I've mentioned, there was that whole storyline within the second book that I really, really um, didn't like. I thought that Lou had really great character development um, in this one, like, like over the course even of just like the three books, um, when you, at the end, kind of like where she's in this book compared to where she was in the first book, um, I think she's just grown so much as a character and I really do love her as a character. So it's really great to see, um, what did this book need to be written? Probably not, but I really did enjoy it. And I thought it was a lot better than the second book. And in the end, I'm giving it four stars. Like I did really, really enjoy it. And then also today finished, um, Sweetly by Jackson Pierce. So uh, this is the Hansel and Gretel retelling. Um, I thought that once again, this was a big improvement on the previous book in the series. So book one was the Little Red Riding Hood retelling, which wasn't my favorite. Um, but this one I thought was a lot better. Um, I didn't have, the other one had a lot of like, like plot holes and things that I was just like, to me were extremely obvious. So in this one, I really liked the romance and I really liked that the romance didn't take center stage. It's not one of those stories where, you know, all of their decisions that they're making become about the romance. I really, really liked that. And I also thought that the main female character, well, the main character, Gretchen, she had really great um, character development. Again, so again, this one had good character development, but I also liked that her character development again, because it can be pretty, pretty prominent in these kind of like YA retellings that her character development wasn't tied to the romance, but I thought that she grew a lot like as a character. I didn't love the writing, like just generally, like the writing in these isn't my favorite, but I did enjoy this one a lot more. I gave the first one a 2.5 stars, I believe. I gave this one a 3.5, so it was a big improvement. And I think, I wasn't sure whether I was going to continue on because they are kind of like they're more companion novels like you don't need to read them in order like there is basically no connection in this one that I could have could see to the first book um in the series but the third one I believe is a Little Mermaid retelling and I don't think I've ever read a Little Mermaid retelling either and so I'm interested in that and then like I say if it was an improvement like this one was then I think it could be really fun to read and then also um I do have one of the challenges on my reading challenge is something to do with reading a book that is set at in the ocean or like at sea. So I thought that maybe this book could help check that challenge off because I'm still not sure what I'm going to read for that challenge. So I thought that I'll probably, I probably will get that one from the library. Also, I listened to more of the audiobook today for This Is How It Always Is by Laurie Frankel. I'm not finished it. I'm about 82% of the way through. This is the literary fiction novel about the, um, family that has um the child that is suf suffering from gender dysphoria who was biologically born as a boy but feels that she is a girl um and it is so good i am really 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 loving it it's so it's mainly told from the perspective of the parents and i'm probably going to save up my thoughts to talk about it um, at the end once I finish it because I want to like kind of see how it finishes up and also I want to try and discover some 
um, own voices, reviews of it as well, so that I can see any like transgender or people who have suffered from gender dysphoria, what things they have to say about it, because obviously it's not something that I personally um, have any experience with. So yeah, but I am really, really enjoying that. And then also I started Burn for Burn by Jenny Hahn and Siobhan Vivian today. This is actually a buddy read that I'm doing with Mel over at That Girl Bookworm. Um, and I don't know how far through I am because I don't have the book in front of me, but I've read six or seven chapters, I think. I'll put it on the screen how far of the way through that I am. Um, but I, so I have read a bit of that today as well. So, uh, so basically I did actually have quite a lot of reading done since I last spoke to you guys, which is really great. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned, this is the last clip for this vlog. I'm probably apologies that we have to finish off with some shitty lighting, but I will have an outro clip after this. So hopefully that's better lit, but yeah, I don't think I have anything else to report. So yeah, roll the outro. So that was my reading vlog for the 9th through the 16th of March, was it? I think. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I would love to chat in the comments down below if you have any thoughts on how my March reading month is going or how your month, March reading month is going. I would love to know. Please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you want to see more from my channel. That's all I've got for this video today. Bye, guys.